All right, boys and girls, we're going to extend uh, our discussion of Lewis dot structures uh, into polyatomic ions. All right, we have to make just one little uh, addition to our method here, and uh, we could do polyatomic ions. And let's just get in on it by doing an example. If you were to look up on your list of polyatomic ions, this uh, formula for the nitrate ion, you would find that it's a, a polyatomic ion that contains a single nitrogen along with three oxygens, and the whole thing carries a negative one charge. Right. Now you can see that this is a non-metal non compound, which pretty much is going to tell you that whatever's holding the N and the O, three O's together must be a sharing arrangement of electrons, because non-metals form covalent compounds. All right, the way we uh, show the structure of a covalent compound is using Lewis dot structures. So we're going to go ahead and use the same process. And at the very end, we're going to have to make just one adjustment to it to um, take into account the negative one charge that is on it. So for right now, let's forget that the negative one is there and go about this as if it were just a regular covalent compound. Right? What we do is we say to ourselves that uh, nitrogen, of which there is one in this compound, contains five valence electrons. So we start counting these up. The oxygen, right, each oxygen contains six valence electrons. It's in group six of the periodic table, but there are three of them. So that's a total of 18 valence electrons from the oxygen. Plus the five from the nitrogen gives us a total of 23 valence electrons. Right. Now... Here is where we have to take into account the fact that this is an ion and that it's a negative one ion or one negative ion. How does anything gain a charge of negative one? It does so by adding an electron to itself. Right? If it's a positive ion, then it would be subtracting electrons or electrons are being given away. But a negative one ion means that the total number of valence electrons has to be increased by one to take into account that charge. So we come to the conclusion then that if we're going to draw the Lewis dot structure for a nitrate ion, we don't have to use three, 23 valence electrons in the drawing, but we have to use 24. That extra one valence electron is due to the negative one charge on the ion. Okay, so 24 valence electrons, let's just keep that in mind. Right. 24 valence electrons. All right, we're going to draw a nitrogen in the center, typically the element that's listed first in the form that goes in the middle, and I'll put three oxygens around it. One here, one here, one here, and I will draw a single bond holding these together. All right, that is the minimum required to hold a molecule together is a single bond. All right. So each of these Oxygens is bonded with a single bond to the nitrogen. Now, how many valence electrons do these bonds uh, take up or use up? Remember, I have 24 total. Each bond is a shared pair, so it's two electrons, so that's two, four, six. So I'm going to subtract six from my total, and I'll come up with the answer of 18. I have 18 valence electrons left to put in my drawing. These uh, excess valence electrons are... Uh, placed around the elements that don't have octets yet. All right, if you look at the central nitrogen, right, it's got six uh, valence electrons around it. They're all involved in bonding, so they're shared. So I need two more to give nitrogen an octet. And right, so I'll subtract two. I have 16. Where can I put these 16 valence electrons? Well, obviously, they're going to go on the oxygen. So right now, each oxygen only has two electrons. So it'll be three, four, five, six, seven. All right, I put six additional electrons around that oxygen, so I have 10 left over. Let me put six more around this oxygen, give that oxygen an octet. So I have four valence electrons left over. I'll stick those guys around the third oxygen, and now I have no valence electrons left over. I am done putting my uh, electrons in this diagram. Right. However, if you look at the number of valence electrons around this oxygen, there's only six. 
two in the bond, and then three, four, five, six. I need to get two more electrons onto this oxygen. And the way we do that is to look to one of its neighbors to see if it has an un, uh, a pair of non-bonding electrons, which this nitrogen does. So I'm going to take these two non-bonding electrons that are on the nitrogen and slip them down here in between the nitrogen and the oxygen. And I end up now giving this oxygen an octet. Now if you go back, everything else has an octet. I'm done. I've used my 24 electrons and I've given everything an octet. Now there's just one last thing we need to do to make this a proper Lewis dot structure for, for a polyatomic ion. And that is we have to somehow uh, indicate on this Lewis dot structure that this whole bundle of atoms, this nitrogen and three oxygens that are being held together, uh, this whole thing has a charge of negative one. And we do that by placing the entire structure inside a pair of square brackets. And in the upper right hand corner, we indicate its charge is a negative one. So the proper Lewis dot structure for the nitrate ion is that right there. Choose the sulfate ion. Sulfate ion. All right. If you look that up on your polyatomic list, it's a sulfur and four oxygen. So it's SO4 and it has a charge of two minus. Let's count up the valence electrons. Sulfur has six, it's in group six. Oxygen also in group six has six valence electrons. So the sulfur, six VEs, valence electrons, and oxygen, six valence, six valence electrons, but it's gonna be times four, because there's four oxygens, so that'll be 24 valence electrons. And remember, we have to now deal with the negative charge on the sign. To become a negative two ion, you have to gain two electrons. So negative two ion contribution is to add two valence electrons to this list. So I have six from the sulfur, 24 from the oxygen, and two additional for the charge. So that's six and 24 is 30, plus two more is 30, two valence electrons. All right, let me just make a note of that up here. 32 valence electrons. Now let's draw a structure. I'll put a sulfur in the middle and four oxygen surrounding it. And let me get to this. Okay. I am going to put a single bond between the sulfurs and the oxygens. It's the minimum you need in, in order to hold this uh, structure together. Um, if you don't have a bond between the sulfur and the oxygen, this oxygen is just going to float off uh, and not be part of this polyatomic ion. So we need at least one bond between each atom. And so that's two, four, six, eight valence electrons are being used up for the bonding here. All right. When we subtract eight from 32, we're going to get 24 valence electrons left over. What do we do with those 24 valence electrons? We use them around the atoms that don't have octet yet octets yet. So for example, this oxygen right here only sees two valence electrons from the bond. So I'll give it three pairs of non-bonding electrons. So an extra six electrons and plus these two, that gives that an octet. All right, so let's say subtract six from that and we get uh, 18 valence electrons. All right. Same thing around this oxygen. Six more here. And I'll have 12 valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six there. And I'll have six valence electrons left over. And then one, two, three, four, six valence electrons there. And we've used up all of our valence electrons. So the sulfate ion is a central sulfur bonded to four oxygens through uh, single covalent bonds. Now, I am not finished though writing this in its proper final form. I need to take the entire structure that I've just drawn and close it in square brackets and then outside the upper right hand corner write down that this entire structure, this SO4 structure is a negative two ion. So I'll put a two minus in the upper right hand corner. And that's it boys and girls.